This is the book Beat Depression by David Hines from 2001. And this is part five, therapy. Chapter 40 is called Therapeutic Thoughts. Our life is what our thoughts make it. Marcus Aurelius, AD 121-180. to The bottom line, treat yourself to the luxury of some nice thoughts. Praise is the most wonderful tonic. It is not of paramount importance whether the uplifting message you receive is praise from someone you admire, from a complete stranger, or self-praise, congratulating yourself for refusing a chocolate, resisting the urge for yet another cigarette, or for motivating yourself to do the housework or to get up and take a walk. What matters is that the spotlight of your mind focuses on something good, something reassuring, and something nice about you, instead of languishing in the dark shadows of depression. When we are depressed, we feel underappreciated, as if no one, including ourselves, understands how hard we are trying to piece together the fragments of our lives and lift ourselves off this island of isolation. At times like this, it is important to stop what we are doing and give ourselves a pat on the back for a genuine achievement, regardless of whether it is a great stride forward in our recovery, a minute but measurable step in the right direction, or kind action for someone else. Take a few moments to reflect on what you have been doing to improve your situation and don't forget to give yourself a huge helping of well-deserved praise for reading this book. This book may well be easy to read, but it's not easy to read and respond when you are depressed. You are doing that right now, and I admire you greatly. Take time out at the end of this chapter to congratulate yourself on your recent and past achievements and give some recognition to the special attributes you possess and the kind deeds you have done in your life. Think about what you have just read. Contemplate only the good things about you and your life for a while. Do this and I believe you will begin to bring the hint of a smile to your lips and a lump to your throat. Okay, so life has been mighty tough for a while now, but there are quite a number of things that are special and nice about you, aren't there? Recognizing our contribution ourselves can actually be more powerful and satisfying than hearing it from others, although naturally we love to hear those rare, wonderful words of praise from loved ones, associates, or the boss. Sometimes, in the maelstrom of modern life, and particularly in the depths of depression, it is all too easy to forget about the worthy contributions we make to ourselves, our families, our friends, and the people and businesses that we work for or did work for in the past. Together with the donations we make to charities in terms of time or money, Without doubt, each of us has something to commend ourselves for, and many of us have so much for which to pat ourselves on the back that the occasion of finishing this chapter really ought to be a moment, or perhaps an evening, of celebration. A celebration of ourselves and the good things we have done or tried to do. This is the book Beat Depression by David Hines from 2001. This chapter is chapter 41, Antidepressants. What other dungeon is so dark as one's own heart? What jailer so inexorable as one's self? Nathaniel Hawthorne, 1804-64, The House of the Seven Gables. The bottom line, your doctor will know what is best for you. 
Worldwide drug sales for antidepressants alone are predicted to reach $15 billion in the year 2002, according to the Scrip Report on Depression and Central Nervous System Disorders. This figure shows a staggering 100% increase on the $7.1 billion spent five years ago in 1997. Sales of this magnitude stimulate massive investment in research and development, and a new generation of antidepressant drugs is on its way. Benefits to consumers will include an improved range of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, that will move on from Prozac and its successes, bringing improvements in mood without the side effects of earlier antidepressants, which can include dizziness, dry mouth, and changes in behavior. The long-term ambition of the pharmaceutical industry is to prevent symptoms in people with a genetic predisposition to depression and to tailor SSRIs specifically for individual, I'll say it again, specifically for individual user groups. Currently, there are many people who are reluctant to take medication of any kind to combat depression, especially mood-altering drugs. There are fears that antidepressants may prove addictive and in some countries the public have been frightened by reports of tranquilizer addiction and people have become wary of anything they perceive as having a similar effect. These reservations and fears need to be taken seriously, but the current generation of antidepressants are less likely to lead to addiction or dependency. The majority of people with depression gain relief with the original drug prescribed, but in the unlikely event that you experience unacceptable side effects, you should tell your doctor and an alternative drug may be suggested. Antidepressants are not all the same and in a minority of cases the only effective way to find the one that brings maximum relief with minimum side effects is by trial and error. I see no advantage in giving complex and potentially confusing information to readers about tricyclics monoamine oxidase inhibitors, inhibitors, MAOIS, and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, when the decision to prescribe or not to prescribe is the exclusive domain of physicians. Physicians. However, Prozac warrants a mention because it has become the most popular antidepressant in the world. The manufacturers claim that patients typically show an improvement in their condition two to three weeks after being prescribed the drug. Unlike previous generations of antidepressants, Prozac has fewer undesirable side effects, although the drug is still controversial. The active ingredient in the drug is fluoxetine, and this inhibits the reuptake of the brain chemical serotonin. Boosting chemical levels in the brain and maintaining the brain in a higher state of arousal, not depressed. Prozac has acquired a reputation for helping people overcome not only their basic symptoms of depression, but also a range of other problems that, until recently, were traditionally thought to require psychotherapy or counselling, such as lack of self-esteem, fear of rejection, and extreme sensitivity to criticism. The drug is often prescribed for senior citizens with depressive symptoms because older people are considered to be able to tolerate the same starting dosage as younger patients, which is not the case for some drugs. So much for getting on. How about getting off? 
Obviously, your doctor will advise you, but here are the general principles. Suddenly, as opposed to gradually, discontinuing any form of antidepressant treatment can have serious consequences for a very small minority of users, and there is always a risk of some minor withdrawal symptoms. Choose the ideal time to gradually scale down your dosage as a prelim preliminary as uh, scale down your dosage as a preliminary to withdrawing from the drug altogether. A period when something exciting is happening in your life is the perfect time to quit. At the very least, ensure that things are moving your way and you have a definite and absorbing interest in life. In the unlikely event that you land heavily or experience the flu-like symptoms caused by too rapid cessation of the drug, all is not lost. You simply return to full dosage for a short period and then, by arrangement with your doctor, you progressively scale down your dosage to zero over time.